Hi Alessam, my name is Lord Franzen and today we're going to talk about the single most annoying thing that any M50 user have to face if they want to connect an HDMI cable to the Canon M50 Mark One, And I'm of course talking about the lack of a clean HDMI. So how can we utilize the M50 despite the lack of clean HDMI? Well, I recently had to do a paid live streaming uh, project for a client. They had an M50 themselves. I got my USR and my M50 and they wanted a free camera setup with an operator behind each camera. Up until now, I've been, been able to do it using a USB uh, HDMI through an Elgato game capture device and so on and put it into um, OBS as a USB source. But managing those small eyes, if you ever used OBS to switch between cameras, is a bit of a pain. And if you want to zoom in or scale up or move around, it's it's not as professional as simply pressing a button like this. So I want to step up my game, and I bought a, ca a Canon. No, I didn't buy a Canon. I bought a Atom Mini Pro from Blackmagic Design because I wanted to be able to switch between camera angles with a single press of a button. Now, I love the Blackmagic Atom Mini Pro, but it takes HDMI, as you can see here, in the back. So, it wasn't really an option anymore to use the Canon webcam utility because that's a USB-driven thing and I wanted every camera angle to be connected to the as a mini. So let's talk about all the problems you will face if you want to do it with a Canon M50. Right now I'm using the R and that's perfect companion for live streaming. I really love using that for live streaming. HDMI is clean. You've got the autofocus eye tracking and it's just working great. You can even punch in, <laughs> let me just show you, to 4K while, let me see, with the crop. Bam! And it's happening without any kind of delay or lag, it's just punching in. So you can even go back out and the autofocus still works. Okay, so the first thing you probably notice if you connect a monitor or you connect it to a TV is that the Canon M50 will shut off the LCD screen and the EVF. So you can't monitor whatever you're looking at. And since the client wanted um, camera operators behind it, I had to find a way that they could steer the camera around and frame the shot. So I figured I had two options. Either connect a tablet or phone to each of the two M50s using the Canon um, Connect app from the app stores, or get an external monitor that had HDMI pass-through. And I did both things, actually. I didn't want to spend a lot of money because, well, there's no point in having too many of these. But I bought the Feel World F5 Pro 5.5 inch touch monitor that has 4K and the display is only 1080 but it allows to pass through 4K. So this cable here is connected to the Canon M50 and this cable here is going into the Atom Mini Pro. So this allowed so this allowed that I could attach this monitor on top of the M50 and they could monitor it and just move the camera around and see what they were yeah, looking at. But as you can see right now, we have all these uh, informations down here because the Canon M50 does not have a clean HDMI. So it is technically mirroring everything, everything it sees on the screen is being sent through the HDMI. And you, the same, blah, blah. it's being sent through the HDMI. But if you keep pressing the info button, you actually get to a point where you actually have a clean screen. And right now we got it into autofocus. As you can see, it 
So the autofocus works and it works great with objects. Let me illustrate. Here's my phone. Ah, autofocus working. Here's my face. Oh, what is that white box around my face? That's face tracking that puts on this white box around people's faces, tracks them, works perfectly. But you don't want that white box to be on your live stream. <sighs> Again, clean HDMI would have sold it. We could have used the amazing autofocus that is in the camera the Canon M50, but no, I'm sorry, didn't happen. So let me just put this beautiful face in front of the camera again. There we go. I had to go into manual focus. And right now it says manual focus. To get that away, you just have to half press uh, the shutter button, things come up. And now I can just manually focus. So that's a workaround for fixing the non-clean HDMI. All right, so let's say that you press the info button and your camera M50 does not have this clean screen. You have to go into menu, go under the yellow uh, menu, the wrench, go to page number four, find shooting info display, press OK. Then you go into screen info settings and make sure that number four have a tick and hit OK. <laughs> Be aware that if you press the menu, your audience will also see what you're doing inside the menu. And if you're changing uh, settings, they will also see you changing the settings. So it's not a perfect solution, but it works. Especially if you have your camera locked at an angle as a top-down camera. I mean, this will work great. I wouldn't have to change anything for the entire shoot. Another thing, if you want to use the Canon 50 in 4K, then make sure that you go into the menu and you go onto the yellow menu page once again. You go to page number three and you go down to HDMI resolution and make sure it's set to auto because otherwise you will only send out a 1080, but you can actually send out a 4K signal so like I said, I had two Canon M50s and for the second one, I used a tablet and had the Canon Connect app on it, connected to the camera and used the tablet as a monitor. But let me just say that that caused so much problems. It's not a stable connection. It may disconnect and it's laggy. The delay is horrible and it's really hard for people to pull focus if they have like a, almost a second of delay. So I can't really recommend that. A monitor with an HDMI pass-through is great. Oh, and did I mention that on this monitor here, you got all these awesome things like false color and a histogram. You got the 9 grid if you want to. And you got zebras and you got safe frames you got focus peak and you can even zoom in so this is what the canon m50 is seeing and you can zoom in and make sure the focus is on point so yeah if you want to use the canon m50 for live streaming using an atom mini and you want to be able to monitor behind the camera get yourself an external monitor that has HDMI pass-through, it is well worth it. Okay, so next up is a weird quirk. Let's say you wanted to have it as a top-down camera and just leave the Canon M50 there for an hour throughout the whole live stream. Now, the problem is that the Canon M50 won't allow this, and I'll show you why. Once again, we go into the menu, we go down into page number two under the yellow page, power savings, you can see this thing called display off after 30 minutes. So you can set it to 15 seconds. Let me just show you what happens. Let's count to 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Darn it! The screen goes black. So you have to touch the camera, I half press the shutter, and now we get another 15 seconds. Of course, I will set this to 30 minutes. 
and now we can count to 30 minutes before the camera shuts off. But that just means that you have to press some kind of button on the Canon M50 every 29 minutes and it's it's something to keep in mind. To fix that problem, you can connect your phone to the camera and if it's connected using the Canon uh, Connect app, then it will bypass this weird auto shut off. You can set it to unlimited. I think on the EOS R, it recognizes it's connected by HDMI and therefore it won't happen, but the Canon 50 got some weird quirks and this is one of them. So just keep that in mind. You have to press the button every now and then, and it's no problem right now because right now you're seeing the EOS R. I can just tap on the M50 and nobody sees it. The problem happens if you half press while live streaming from the M50, people will see all these settings and it's just not as professional. So all in all, if you do not own a Canon M50 at this point, I would not recommend getting one specifically for live streaming. At least not the Mark 1. The Mark 2 might actually be quite good for it, but there are other options available. Like Sony have something that doesn't have all these weird limitations and it's probably better for live streaming anyway. And if you start putting all the costs together, like an extra monitor and this and this and that, well, it adds up and M50 is like a cheap camera and you start putting expensive equipment on it. So you might be a bit of getting like a Canon uh, RP or something. We could do this job better, but your money, your decision is you may already have a Canon M50 at the time. And you may like me have a job where you just can't keep buying cameras for weird uses and you have to do what you can with what you've got. So if you want to use the HDMI out on a Canon 50, that's the things you need to be aware of. If you only need one camera angle, got the M50, look into the webcam utility app. It creates a clean signal with um, tracking and you can still use the backside of the monitor while it's connected. So it actually fixes all of the problems I have with the HDMI, but I would have to, let me show you. I had to be bothered with clicking on the little eye for the camera. And I want to do something more professional using this switcher. So yeah, that's all I had to say. Um, please consider subscribing. We are this close at reaching the first 100 followers or uh, subscribers, what you're gonna call you. I'm thankful, so far you've been amazing. I'm so happy to see how thankful and nice people are in the comments. And I hope we can build a community about, about around this and that people can ask questions in the comment section and you guys will answer them. And if I make a mistake, you will point it out so I can learn something as well. That would be Hella cool. And I don't think hella cool is hella cool to say, but that's where I'm gonna leave it. Be safe.